Hello everyone, how are you doing today? I hope you're doing well. My name is Dr. Yabo. I'm sure we've met before and if we haven't, I'm a life coach for women. I'm a lifestyle blogger, a board certified pediatrician and physician entrepreneur. I love to motivate women every day with my posts and blogs and vlogs and videos. And I'm on the board of Flow Health. I'm also an author. My book Permanent Happiness is on Amazon now. I decided to do this video and also walk at the same time so you may see the video move a little bit and you may see it go from good lighting to not very good lighting but I wanted to kill two birds with a stone and I feel like sometimes it's just nice to be outside because it gets my creative juices going so here we go so what I want to talk about today is because again I, go, I do my videos based on questions and DMs I receive from a lot of you so I'm doing today's video just to talk about how to attract a high quality man because again I'm 50 years old I just got remarried and I think because of that part of my life it has you know drawn me drawn many women to me who are in middle age who are wondering if they'll ever be able to find a man again and it's even drawn me to younger women as well who um, just want to find out how to date again because they see me doing all of these things that I do that I just told you I'm a doctor I'm a blogger I hold women's conferences I'm a life coach I run a business I run some other income uh, it's other streams of income and they just wonder how they can do all that as well as well as find a good man so so here we go I'm going to give you like five or six or is it seven tips I don't remember the first one again I'm going to sound like a broken record here but it's the it's what I talk about all the time that you have to learn how to be financially free you have to learn how to be financially independent because nobody wants a parasite and I say that respectfully you have to find a way for you to be financially independent because a lot of women have this notion in their heads even if they don't say it out that they want to marry a rich wealthy man they want to marry a millionaire but that comes with a lot of other hassles a man doesn't become like anybody doesn't make, become a millionaire overnight you know unless he inherited the money and even if he inherited the money I don't even know if that's kind of the kind of man you want to be who inherited tons of money and just has all this money at his disposal and you know he is not doing anything else productive but anyway the inheritance is rare so let's talk about the situation where women just have this expectation that they want to marry a rich wealthy man and live the high life and live the luxurious life first of all the, the man isn't going to get to be a millionaire just by sitting at home he's going to be gone a lot so you're going to have to decide what you want do you want a man who's going to shower you with money and with all the luxury things of life and not be at home and be working all the time working not coming home till 8 or 9 or 10 p.m. at night because this happens it's real there's many men who do that travel all the time in fact now there's so many uh, families that don't even live together the man lives in another continent the woman lives somewhere else because he's trying to make tons of money or loads of money somewhere so wanting a rich wealthy man and you not working and you just enjoying the high life first of all is not even a very if you think of if you say it out loud and think about it it's not even a very good thing to desire for your own self-esteem and then number two it comes with trade-offs he has to work for the money so he won't be home he's just going to be like a bank giving you money he'll be gone a lot and then that's also going to open all sorts of situations where he's going to be gone from you a lot your relationship and your marriage will start to suffer and then he's going to be open to see he'll be seeing his female work colleagues a lot more than he sees you and you know what that means then opens up opens him up for cheating and all that if he's gone a lot living in hotel rooms or living has a condo apartment somewhere else in another part of the world because he's making millions for you 
and he's seeing all these other women, you know what that means. It opens up for cheating because you guys will not be together. You're not having any sexual, you know, relations and all of that. So be financially independent and stop looking for men to be your bank. You know, you have to look for a man who, of course, has potential, who's well-educated, who's hardworking, and both of you be potentials together and work together to achieve your money. So you can then get nannies, babysitters, and help at home when you're both gone at, the, at regular, normal hours, and you come back home after five o'clock and have a nice relationship or if you both have a business then you have a flexible schedule together and you both develop and you're equal partners together but wanting a lot of you women that's your problem you meet these guys and you're like uh i don't he's not rich enough he's not wealthy enough what kind of car does he drive some guys also drive very old cars but they're actually millionaires. I hope you know that. Some men don't believe in driving flashy cars. In fact, I don't like men who show off. You know, I don't need a man who drives a Rolls Royce and Bentley and this and that. And then you walk into his house and the furniture is torn. I don't like that kind of lifestyle or mindset. There's some men who do that. Wear the most expensive wristwatch, but they can't go on a vacation even to Florida, I talk less of out of the country. Yeah, so for me, my priorities are different. I don't need the flashy car and all that. I need a nice vacation, a man who will be home with me and just have a nice warm family life. So that was a long number one, but women, you have to make your own money. So get up and start doing that, okay? Number two, okay, I'm, I'm walking a lot more now, so of course, I'm. My heart is going faster, but yeah, I'm killing two birds with a stone. Number two is when you're dating, obviously don't be easy to get. We've talked about this over and over. Don't be the chaser. Let the man chase you. Stop cooking a man 10, 50 meals before he even shows that he's interested in you. Men are inherently meant to be chasers, so please stop chasing men let them do the chasing let him prove to you that he really wants you in his life if you're acting all needy and desperate for a man he's going to run away and go and look for a woman that he can actually chase men bond with women by chasing them and we like to receive that love so if you turn it around and you start buying him gifts and cooking for him and calling him four times a day and wondering why he's not texting or calling you and chasing him with calls he's going to run away so let him do his part of the chasing and this part and this brings me to find your own happiness women you know Men, we women want men that are happy, that will bring us happiness. Men want the same too. Men also want a woman that will bring them happiness. So before you even get onto the dating scene, this, this part is very important. Before you even start dating, go and check your mental health, your spiritual health, everything, your physical health and all that, and get help if you need to. If you're needy and you're not happy in your own life, it's not yet time for you to start dating. You have to fix your own happy. There's no man on this earth, no human being that can make you happy. You are going to make yourself happy. So this is really, really important. A lot of women are sad and depressed, cry themselves to sleep every night because they don't have a man in their lives. There's no man that's going to make you happy. So you better get up and start doing hobbies that you love, journaling, starting a business, you know, um, giving of your time, volunteering, taking up a creative task, you know, or traveling on your own, writing a book, blogging. Do things that make you happy when you're single. Be happy single so that you won't be so needy for happiness because a needy person is a big turn off and men know how to figure out women who are needy it's very easy so this may be why you can find a man because you meet men and they already can tell from the conversation that all you want 
high <laughs> that all you want is you just want to be coupled up with them so and all you're looking for is for them to provide provide and give you happiness so be happy on your own happiness is an inside job I was single for 10 years and I did a lot of dating yes I did I was in a four-year relationship after my divorce I didn't get married to that guy because I didn't think he was the one I didn't want to get married to him and then I dated back and forth I got a lot of dating ex experience I'm not saying that I had sex with them but I got a lot of dating experience and I learned a lot in those 10 years of my divorce I read a lot of books and I just spend time on my own and like I've said over and over my creativity soared you know I wrote three books I published one I started writing my practice started doing well I was happy and developing myself without a guy so I was able to see clearly and I did meet many guys but many of them didn't check the boxes for me for marriage so I wasn't desperate I wasn't needy I was fine by myself yes I would occasionally, in fact, maybe more than occasionally, miss having a man in my life because I wanted the companionship, I wanted the safety and security of a man. I wanted, you know, to have sex with a, with a man in a marriage, sex, sacred sex, and I didn't have that. But, but I didn't need a man, man for money or for my provision or for, I wasn't needy. So a lot of women are needy and that comes through. So find your own happy. If you're not yet happy and you're sad and depressed, please don't join the dating scene. In fact, I took two years off when I wasn't having any luck with dating. After my pastor gave this sermon about if you've been dating, dating, you can find somebody. Take some years off. And I decided that day after I heard that sermon and I took two years off and I did not date at all. And those were good two years for me because my creativity and my happiness just, you know, just skyrocketed. In fact, my daughters were getting scared that ah, mommy starting to be too happy single. She may never want to meet a guy again. But I actually was, you know, thriving really well. So find your happy. And then women, we have to take care of ourselves. The way you're going to attract a guy, so the first way is be financially independent, be financially free so that you're not desperate and needy. Find your own happy so that you don't come across as desperate and needing a man. And then as women sometimes, not even just as we get older, all women, we don't take care of ourselves. You have to take care of yourself. You have to exercise, eat right, take care of your mental health you know don't become a couch potato get up and walk like I'm walking just take care of yourself and try to retain some of your youthfulness men like women that are feminine and are still youthful and still have that playfulness within them they do you know it's like men you know how the, some books will tell you that men like the women that still have that reproductive kind of attitude or look like and I'm not saying that you have to be the perfect hourglass figure and be a size 0 or size 2 or size 4 you can be a size 16 or size 22 and if a man likes women that size you can still be very very attractive everybody is different everybody knows what they're physically attracted to I don't I can't you know blame anybody for what they like but it's all about taking care of yourself still maintaining that playfulness youthfulness you don't have to have a pouty you know worried sad look all the time be playful you know don't take yourself too seriously take some jokes laugh at his jokes just have fun you know be playful be youthful and the way you carry yourself stand tall you know have a nice gait have a good upright gaze take care of your skin you know men like all of that they do and a lot of women do that in the beginning and they let themselves go so make sure you're taking care of yourself make sure you have hobbies and creative talents and other things going on for yourself so that even when you're dating you have other things to talk about and which brings me to the and also be spontaneous 
I made some notes. So be feminine, be flirtatious. Men like women, I'm not saying flirt with married men, and I'm not saying flirt with men that are taken. That's not a good habit. Some women perfect that. They flirt with your, your husband will be right beside you. They're flirting with him, they're touching him. They're, it's just too, no, don't do that. But if you know the guy is single, or you're on a date, or you're around single men, be flirtatious, but not needy. There's a way you can do it. You can be flirtatious and feminine and smile and laugh a lot. Don't overdo it though, because that can get annoying. But be feminine and flirtatious and just be easy to get along with, but don't be easy to get. Be easy to get along with, but don't be easy to get. Those are two different things, okay? You can get along with him and be feminine and playful, but don't go home and jump into bed with him. Be feminine, get along with him easily. Then after the date, you go to your separate homes and let him start missing you and thinking about, oh, wow, I wish I could have that woman in my life because she seems so happy. She seems so feminine. She's so relaxed with herself. I'd love to have her in my life. She seems like she has a happy life already and I can make her happier. So make sure you have a happy life by yourself and then look for a man to add to that happiness. But if you're a sad, depressed, dejected person with low self-esteem, please fix that first. Go and see a coach, come and see me, sign up to see me. Let me get you to a state of happiness and self-love and self-esteem first before you start dating because if you go onto the scene with that kind of mental health you're going to attract the wrong man you're going to attract the man who is going to spot that you're needy you need help and he's going to capitalize on that and use you for his own needs probably end up cheating on you and all that because he sees that all you need is just a man to take care of you and he will just go outside to look for other women so fix yourself before you find a relationship please the next thing is you have to know what you want in a man you have to have values you have to write down the things you want in a man because the problem with the thing is if you don't know what you're looking for you're going to find a man and then think you can change him. That's a huge problem. So you have to know what you're looking for precisely. And I'm not saying this is going to be 100%. It's kind of flexible. You know, you're not going to get 100% of what you want in a man. But make sure, like, I knew what I wanted in a man. I wanted a man who was intelligent, obviously, who has minimum a bachelor's degree or even in fact if possible a man who had higher um, education than bachelors but i needed at least minimum bachelors a man who was intelligent a man who was good with the command of english spoken and written and i knew the physical factors i wanted i wanted a tall masculine man i'm ultra feminine and i needed an ultra masculine man physically not with huge biceps but i wanted a tall lean man so anyway i kind of knew the things i wanted i knew the things i absolutely wanted and then i knew the ones i could be flexible with and then when you find that man be ready to accept him the way he is this one is important women always think they can change men so you find a man because he's rich he has money in the bank he's driving a bentley and, but he has a nasty attitude, treats you like crap, and you're thinking, yeah, he'll change. If I cook him some nice meals or give him some nice sex, he'll change. He's not going to change. Don't fool yourself. So you have to accept him the way he is. When I met my husband, I knew he was English. English people tend to be a little sarcastic. They have a sarcastic humor. And, you know, I knew that that was something I couldn't be ultra sensitive to. He didn't mean any harm. It's just the way he speaks, but he respects me a lot. And he made me a priority in his life and he still does. And he just makes me feel good. So it's just, you have to 
be able to have some trade-offs and some flexibility. Another little thing is when he does the dishes, which he does a lot, Neil doesn't like dishes sitting around. He'll do the dishes, he'll load the dishes, he does all that. But when he hand washes the dishes, he doesn't rinse the soap off. He doesn't. That's what he grew up doing. And I've all, I also know that there's many English people who were raised like that. Not like us Nigerians where we wash the dishes and then rinse off every spot of soap. He doesn't. I first was un uncomfortable with it and then I thought to myself, well, he's still alive, he's 57. So even if he ate some soap <laughs> in his plates, it didn't, it didn't kill him. And many English people do that and they're not dead. So I'm like, yeah, but that's a little thing. And I accepted it rather than criticizing him. So make sure you know what you want in a man so that you can accept him the way he is. Because the worst thing is being criticized. We as women don't want to be criticized. If you're dating a man or you get married to a man and you're criticizing him all the time, that relationship is going to die. He'll start cheating on you, you guys will start fighting and it's just not good. So make sure you marry who you really want to marry. Make sure you marry what you see. Don't marry the prospect of marry exactly what it is you see because nobody's going to change for anybody this this is very vital information so accept him the way he is so that you can compliment him you can support him and you can love him the way he is everybody likes to be loved men like to be told oh you're so loving you're doing such a great job well done oh that's so lovely you've made my life so better you know but those are things you say to him after he's proven himself to you though. I'm not saying you should start being so needy and praising a man that you're not even engaged or married to. Yes, be nice, be playful, be flirtatious, take care of yourself, take care of your hygiene, make sure your hair is clean, make sure you smell nice, all of that. I remember Neil always used to comment about how I smelled. He said he just loved my natural smell. He loved when I wore perfume. Men love all those of those things, okay? Make sure you don't go on a date with braids that are six months old and have a stale smell. Some of my sisters, please you do that. That's not acceptable, acceptable. Wash your weaves, wash your wigs and take care of yourself, okay? Be easy to get along with, but don't be easy to get, okay? Don't be rigid also. Be flexible, be spontaneous. Men like women who are spontaneous, okay? And the last thing is date different, okay? Some of us women, I guess, I'm talking to my Nigerian and African sisters here, we feel we have to marry somebody who's also African. Or if we're black, we feel we have to marry or date only people who are black. You're restricting yourself. Actually, it's actually fun. It's very fun. It makes the relationship fun and interesting and curious. When you learn about each other, you know, it's just nice. You don't have to marry somebody who is exactly like you. Date different, date different cultures. Have an open mind. We're all human beings and you'll be surprised how that will bring so much depth and so much fun, curiosity to your marriage. You don't have to marry somebody who's exactly from your tribe and everything. People are scared that they won't get along with people who are different from them. No! It, that's actually very different. You know, you can cook different dishes, get to know each other, as long as you have similar values, okay? I think that's the main thing. Date different, be curious, be interesting. You never know the man who's going to love you and treat you like his jewel and just be the best man to you. Maybe a Caucasian man, he may be an Indian man, he may be Jewish, he may, you know, <laughs> he could be Asian. You don't know, don't limit yourself. It's good to date different, but just have similar values. Okay, have similar values. And I'm going to give a little bonus one, which I say a lot, and it may not apply to everyone, but I've read many relationship books. I've dated for 10 years on and off, and I know that be careful about men who don't have a father figure in their lives. Okay, 
be careful if you meet a man who's all just constantly talking about his mother his mother his mother his mother his dad is nowhere to be found he hasn't had a dad or any father figure in his life be very careful because that mother he's talking about all the time may end up posing a threat and a competition to you and a lot of men get very confused they feel like they have to be loyal to both their wife and their mother and some of these women uh, mothers mothers-in-law are overbearing they're very needy they don't and manipulative and they don't have much going on for them and they just interfere so much in your life and make you miserable so be careful men who have uh, fathers in their lives and who have father figures in their lives they're different they've learned how to be a man how to be a good husband and of course you want to get to know him i'm not saying every father is a good father some fathers are cheat a cheat they cheated on their mom so get to know the guy even if he has a father figure in his life get to know his dad when I met my, uh, when I met Neil, on a third date, his dad was visiting Atlanta from England, and he invited his dad on a date. That was one of the days that I also knew, mm, I really do like this guy. You know, for a man to feel you're so worthy and hold you in that much esteem, to ask his dad to come on to dinner with you on a third date, thinks highly of you. He's not just dating you for sex or just for nothing. That really showed me that, oh, this seems like this is a keeper. I mean, I didn't decide on the third date I was keeping him, but I checked that box and I'm like, oh, wow, this is good. You know, and his dad came. His dad was, what, 85 or 86, and he was so much fun. He was sweet. And then we went to a comedy club after that. So you know and then i could see that he had a lot of good values he had lost his mom a few years before his mom wasn't alive but you know i just could tell that oh this man is serious he holds me in really high esteem bringing his dad along and then i met his sons soon after so even before we'd had a eighth or tenth date i'd met his father i'd met his son so i knew that he really liked me men don't just have you meet their close family members if they're not serious about you so pay attention to all of these things the values if they have a father figure what kind of father he was if that father was loyal to his mom and they stayed married for a long time those are things to look for okay all right i i hope this helped i am um, just hope that you guys can do all what i said and you will see and if you want to you have to know the kind of guy you want to meet and go to different places i know the pandemic is going on right now it's hard but please guys try online dating i met neil on match there are good men on match there may not be many but there are a few so try online dating try to go to a few different places than where you've been going and then do all these things that I'm telling you. Work on yourself. Find your own happiness by yourself. Work on your own financial independence. Stop looking for rich, wealthy men. Be feminine. Take care of yourself. Eat well. Exercise. You know, be spontaneous. Be playful. Don't lose your youthfulness. Don't start acting like an old woman because you're 30 or 40 years old. Retain your youthfulness, okay? I'm 50 years old and I still walk, what, like five miles every day or more. Retain your youthfulness and take care of yourself and don't be so needy. Okay, need a man for security, safety, companionship and for good sex and for good sex. And that's fine to need a man for good sex. Well, you know, we all want that in our lives. But don't need a man for money. Please don't. Make your own money. Okay. I hope this was helpful. I'm actually going to write a blog. I've started writing it, but I'm going to release a blog later this month by God's grace titled um, Dating as a Black Female Professional in America. I just feel that that's a topic I have to write about because I have so much to say about that because that comes with a lot of struggles and 
um, all sorts of things. So my next blog is going to be very, very interesting. Dating as a black female professional in America. In fact, I may add dating as a black successful female professional in America. So look out for that blog. It's going to be interesting. Okay. All right. I hope this video has helped. I am going to go inside and get some water because it is hot in Hotlanta. Okay, guys, please make sure you comment below if you're loving my videos. You guys don't comment on my videos on YouTube. You just send me DMs. Okay. DMs are great, but please comment on my YouTube. It's very important just so that I can keep doing more videos and YouTube can you know make my videos more available to more people to help them if you don't comment or like them it doesn't help my videos so i'm helping you out by making all these videos so make sure you help me out and help other people out so they can see this video by not just liking please like it if you like it and please comment below. <laughs> Commenting on my DM doesn't help me much. And please, if you like all the other videos you've watched on my page, can you go back and comment on them? And if you liked them and didn't give me a like, can you go back and like them and then comment, okay? Because you know, I do love to help people and I want more people to watch my videos, but, YouTube will only make them available to more people if there's more engagement. Okay, all right. I will see you on my tea time tomorrow with Reverend Nida Husa and next Sunday with my friend Elfoni. We're going to talk about fashion. But see you tomorrow. We're going to talk about thriving as a woman in today's world with Reverend Nida Husa. Okay, bye. Don't forget to like and comment below. And please share. Share with your friends who will benefit from all this relationship advice. Okay, I'm going to get some water. I'm thirsty. Bye-bye. <laughs>